Chapter 1. Preparation and Getting Started with Oils. Understanding the Materials. Number 1. Oil Paints. Oil paints can be purchased from art stores. Oil paints come as a whole set of 24 or 36 colors. For an artist who loves to play with colors, it is important to understand how colors are made. Some of the common colors are scarlet red, ultramarine blue, yellow, zinc titanium white, Chinese white, and lamp black oil paints. You should buy colors which you think are easy for you to handle, however, by understanding the basics of color, you will be able to make a more knowledgeable choice. Primary colors are the basic colors that make up all other colors through mixing specific primary colors. Red, blue, and yellow are the primary colors. Increasing or decreasing the quantity of individual primary colors is how other colors are formed. Mixing the primary colors results in interesting hues. Transparency and solidity in colors and oil paints are achieved by changing the quantity of paint and oil. If more oil is used than the oil color in a mixture, the colors will represent transparency and vice versa. Number 2. Brushes Brushes are made from a variety of materials. They help in the application of color to a surface and help in mixing colors as well. You should invest in high-quality brushes so that they do not lose hair while you are painting. The two main types of painting brushes are round brushes and flat brushes. They are available in various sizes and shapes ranging from number 0, the smallest, at 1 32nd of an inch, to number 24, the largest at 31 30 seconds of an inch for a flat brush and 11 16 of an inch for a round brush. For oil painting, it is best to get large flat brushes. This will work best for filling in backgrounds as well. The brushes should be of excellent quality. For practice, you can use synthetic brushes which are a little cheaper. Look for a material which is easy to handle so that you do not have to spend time taking hair off of the painting. To eliminate any hassle, get good brushes so that more concentration is given to painting rather than to the material. Brushes should be kept clean. When you are done with painting, always clean the excess paint off the brushes. Wash them in turpentine oil and, with the help of a clean cloth, get rid of any excess paint on them. This will help keep the brushes clean so that the next time you use them, there won't be colors coming out of them and spoiling the new hues you are trying to get. Number 3. Color Preparation and Strokes Colors are the fundamental element of painting. Without proper color usage, good paintings cannot be made. You must have observed that some paintings are made just out of colors and no complex drawings are done on them. To do this, you should have the knowledge of colors and color schemes to make good paintings. In the earlier times, painters had to prepare their own pigments through experimentation. You are lucky enough to have the liberty to walk into art stores and get exactly what you need. Make use of everything available, but you still should have knowledge of how to get more colors if they are not available in the market. In this section, color preparation is explained. When it comes to oil colors, there is a lot to choose from, including zinc titanium white, gray, cadmium red, crimson yellow, etc. Oil colors are available in sets of different colors, but it is always fun and artsy to prepare your own colors. Oil paints are available in tubes. For understanding color preparation, you need to understand the color wheel. Primary colors are basic or fundamental colors, and they are red, blue, and yellow. A simple guide like the color wheel can help in the development of colors. These are the most basic color combinations to form new colors with. Red and blue is purple. Red and yellow is orange. Blue and yellow is green. Purple, green, and orange are secondary hues. They are obtained by mixing two primary colors. The primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. That is why we have used them to get secondary colors. It is the most important thing to remember when it comes to colors. You must have observed that purple is available in mauve, magenta, and other shades. Sure, pink, peach, dull orange, etc. are available with ease in the market, but how are they made? To understand these, concentrate on the examples and get your material and mix them according to the guide to get amazing results. Follow along and make your own color wheel. The easiest way to remember the placement of colors in a color wheel is Roy G. Biv, the same color placement of a rainbow. It stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. This placement also shows that red, which is a primary color, comes first, then orange, which is a secondary color, obtained by mixing yellow and red. The secondary colors are placed between two primary colors that they are made up of. Adding more quantity of blue and less red to a mixture will make blue violet, whereas adding more quantity of red and less blue will result in the preparation of red violet. These are called tertiary colors. 
They are prepared by mixing one primary color with one secondary color. In the demonstration of red-violet and blue-violet, red and blue are the primary colors, whereas violet or purple are the secondary color. The colors which are situated or positioned opposite to one another in a color wheel are complementary colors. The colors which are located close to one another in the color wheel are known as analogous colors. Analogous colors are sets of three or four colors which are determined by moving right or left from the selected color. Observe different paintings and you will notice that all the paintings follow a color palette. The color palette used for paintings is not accidental. The painters carefully select the colors to use to accurately convey the meaning of their paintings. It is important to understand what each color means and represents. Likewise, the colors used with one color should complement one another and give a pleasing effect. If all the colors are loud, the painting will not be appealing. The same is true for a painting having all dull hues. There are, of course, always exceptions. Tints and shades are achieved by adding white and black to the colors. Tints make the light tones of the colors, while shades make the darker tones of the color. When you create a color by mixing different colors, a tint or shade is made in order to make the painting look interesting. For example, if you add black to scarlet red, you will get maroon, which is a shade of red. Similarly, if you add white to scarlet red, you will get pink, which is a tint of red. Painting is more about learning to play with colors, and even simple, interesting backgrounds can be made by the artists who have the knowledge of colors. Keep on experimenting with colors. The more you practice, the more you will learn. Number 4. Turpentine Oil, Linseed Oil Turpentine and linseed oils are the most commonly used oils for oil paintings. Linseed oil triggers the drying process and helps keep the paint intact with the surface. Turpentine oil is used to make the consistency of the oil paint thin. When you are done with painting, always clean your brushes with turpentine oil. You can clean your brushes by suspending them in the turpentine oil and after some time, clean them with a cloth so that no paint particle is left on the brush. If paint stays on your brush, it will get hard and damage your brush. Next time, when you will paint with an unclean brush, the color particles already in the brush will get mixed with the new colors you are preparing. Number 5. Wooden Board or Stands These are available in the art store in different sizes. They are used to attach the sheets, cardboard paper, etc. on. With the help of wooden board, the sheets are kept straight and painting can be done easily without ending up in a mess. A 20 inch by 30 inch board or larger works best so that it can be used to support both large and small paper. A board is placed on the wooden stand so that the artist can stand and paint. Stands are used to keep the canvas straight on them so that they do not move while painting, allowing you to paint with ease. The wooden board can also be used as a separate entity and used on a table or the floor, whatever is more comfortable for you. Always remember it's your comfort that matters the most. Number 6. Masking Tape Masking tape is made up of thin, paper-like material and is easy to use. It is used to stick the cardboard, sheet, or any other surface to the wooden board so that the surface paper or canvas does not move while painting. The paper is placed on the wooden board and is pasted edge to edge with the masking tape taking out all the air bubbles and stretching the paper. It makes the surface paper straight and helps the painter to paint with ease. Moreover, the set margin can also be kept. If the tape is applied properly, then the paint does not come onto the surface under the tape, hence helping in keeping margins safe and clean. Number 7. Canvas, Cardboard Paper, and Hard Sheet There are many different types of surfaces that you can use to do your paintings on. There are grained paper or scholar sheets, cardboard paper, canvas, etc. available on the market. The response of oil and oil paints are different on each of them. It is you who will decide which surface to paint on and the size of the surface as well. People usually use sketchbooks, but this doesn't work for oil painting. If one page of the sketchbook is used and you want to use another, it will not be possible because the drying time of oil paints is longer than other paints. The oil also seeps down to the next sheets of the sketchbook. It is ideal to use single sheets and paste them onto the wooden surfaces if you use these for oil painting. You may use 20 inch by 30 inch sheets or divide them in half to paint. For beginners, cardboard sheet is preferred because it is cheap and thick. As a beginner, you will be practicing many different things. Cardboard sheet or hard sheet will work best for this. Canvas cloth is the ideal surface for oil paints. Number 8. Palette 
A palette is used to mix colors on. Any plate can be used for it. There are different palettes available in market. Some are of wood, while others are of plastic. You can choose either one according to your budget. Palettes are used in all kinds of painting to hold paints in. They always come in handy for painters. It is important to get some palettes so that it is always easy for you to mix a number of colors and keep them with you. You do not always have to wash your palettes. The colors can be used over and over again, particularly when it comes to oil painting. Particularly when it comes to oil painting, oil can be introduced to dried paints to make them a mixture which can be used again in paintings. Your paints are never wasted once they are on the palette. It is good to have a palette so that you can mix colors and get more hues. Number 9. Container A container is used to keep oil or water in. Any old glass jars, plastic mugs, etc. can be used for this purpose. Containers made of different materials are available in art stores as well. Number 10. Knives. Some artists use knives to put a large amount of paint in the form of strokes on paintings. With the help of knives, huge areas can be covered in less time and more paint can be applied efficiently. They are used in impasto and a la prima techniques, discussed later in this book, and are available in a number of sizes in the market. Number 11. Cloth. When you start to paint, keep a lot of pieces of cloth or rags with you. You will need them plenty of times to wipe off excess paint, dab more oil, clean your hands, blend some paint, etc. An apron can be used to protect your clothes from stains as well. Number 12. Basic stationery. As an artist, you will always need to have a pencil, sharpener, and eraser with you. They are used to sketch and make compositions.